I want to talk about advanced tracking and motivation at this point. Uh, how do we continue motivating the dog to keep this exercise uh, interesting for the dog? So why are we talking about it when we are so much advanced in the process and the dog seems to do it pretty well? Well, the reason is, think about it. Um, we have different goal than our dogs. For us, the goal is maybe to score high in a trial. Uh, and uh, for that, we need to rely that the dog will do the exercise because there is not much we as handlers can help the dog on the track. Um, and then for the dog, it's still an activity to do with the handler and it still needs to be rewarded. And so uh, for me, the motivation should always be in our minds as we work with our dogs because this is their reward even though they seem to be doing it because uh, they get used to it or for whatever reasons but we still need to reward the dog and so dogs are very different for example the dog that i currently have he's not too crazy about food but he do he does like uh, tracking exercise he actually enjoys it uh, and I had a dog before him that was that had absolutely crazy food drive, but he hated tracking. It was too boring for him. He had an independent mindset, and so we struggled a lot with a lot of things with him, despite the excellent food drive. So uh, they're different dogs, and uh, I think rewarding them uh, uh, helps build the program and helps train them in tracking a lot more smoother. And so, uh, where are we at currently in our pro progress? So the dog tracks obviously, they know what it is, they know the setup uh, and, and uh, they know the command, they know the pattern, so they go from left to right, they check every footstep and this is important for IGP tracking, I don't know uh, if, if it's a requirement for any other type of tracking. Um, we also work through the corners and the dog knows the corners and we work variety of patterns, we work on the straight lines, sharp corners, or rounded corners, or serpentines. So the dog have seen a lot of things and learned a lot of things. Um, and if you remember from my troubleshooting video, I use a uh, reward, I use a ball on the track. So my dog tracks for this. And uh, even though at this point I still bait every step in the track, the reward that my dog wants is this. And so my rule is that that ball has to be always on the track, whether either it's one time or several times, I vary this, but my dog knows that at some point he will find the toy. Uh, and so my dog uh, doesn't know articles yet, specifically articles, but my dog knows when he finds the toy, he knows to indicate it. So he knows to lie down in front of it. So for me, uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about uh, teaching my dog to indicate articles at some point. And so where I'm at in my training is that I need to start fade out the bait. And so my truck will become less, uh, with less food than my dog is used to. So for the last maybe year or so we've been tracking with lots of food on the track and the dog knows to, to look for it and that's how I want to make that, that's how I made sure that he knows the patterns. It becomes really ingrained into him to check every footstep. I'm also baiting corners and so at this point uh, what I will have to do next is that I will continue baiting corners but I will reduce, start reducing gradually the amount of bait in my footsteps. And so what it does is that as I reduce the amount of food uh, on the track, I don't want uh, the drop of interest in my dog. I still want the dog to motivate, to be motivated. And so to me, introducing a new kind of treasure hunt for the dog is a way to balance, right? I'm reducing the food on the track, the dog might, might become less interested in it, and I want to give something back to the dog to increase that interest in a way to balance. And so what that is, I will show you in a second. It's those food containers. So I, I would place my food, my reward, I use hot dogs for tracking. So I would place hot dogs in these containers. I would close the containers. Um, I usually cut tiny little hole with the knife on the lid of the container and I place containers on the track, just like I do with my toy. Um, 
and so because the dog uh, knows pretty much to indicate this it's very easy to show them that you need to indicate those as well but it brings the excitement back there is something new they need to look for and uh, as I fade out the bait in the footsteps this balances the uh, excitement of the dog and in the video that follows you will see that uh, this is one of the I think this was our second time when I used containers on the track and you you'll see that he kind of lost the track at some point but he's still excited he's searching he wants to find um, the food and the toy and so we didn't lose the performance of the dog and so I think this is very important at this point to continue so how I do this so what are the my, my steps of of the progress so as I work on this so very first uh, track that I lay with the food containers uh, and then one thing always remember the ball should be there always at some point in, on a track so this is given so containers are new so what I do is that my first track is usually straight because I want to teach the dog that when you find this little container you also need to indicate it just like you indicate the toy and it usually takes one track and I don't want to uh, disrupt kind of dogs thinking with corners and anything else so I just lay a straight track um, and I introduce those containers I ask the dog to lay down to indicate the dog learns that I come up and open it and so he knows the routine and so after that when I lay my tracks for practice I start to reduce the food and I usually do this first I skip maybe three or five steps and for example if I skip the food on the right foot so I, I laid the track, I had food in every step, and then on this right foot, I didn't put the food back in. So then I make five steps, and then I want my food to be in that foot step that I missed, always. This will be forcing the dog to keep going and looking, right? So if he had the food on the left foot, and then you went and didn't find anything, the foot eventually appears on the right. So that kind of, uh, the only, what it, kind of the pattern that I follow. but. I randomly do this between three to nine to seven to five so random amount of steps that I skip and then I place the food containers also randomly so it's not necessarily if I skipped the the five steps or ten steps without the food it's not necessarily that I place container after that uh, I just pick up with regular bait in the footsteps but containers become something new that the dog looks for um, and so this is how we are going to progress and I want to get to the point where eventually uh, I have no bait or nearly none bait in my footsteps maybe one or two here and there but the dog is searching for those food containers and the balls and so this way so pretty much what we are doing at this point is that we are up kind of we upping our reward, our motivation, because we um, bringing a little bit down the level of interest on the track for the dog, and so this balances the two together. And in the following video, you will see how we did this. I think this was our second time with the containers, so um, I'm helping him a lot, and then I was a little bit distracted uh, by filming it. Um, but you'll still still see how he does the corners and how we work with this. Happy tracking! Good zook, zook, good zook. Very good. He's lost. Zook. Zook. Good Zook. Flats. Good Zook. He's lost and I lost attention. Good boy. I should have watched it. See what you lost? That's yours. And you lost it. Yeah. You didn't find it. You didn't find it. 
pay attention next time. And I have to pay attention next time as well. I was watching other dogs, not him. Good boy. Zook. Good Zook. Good Zook. Another corner. Have my marker there. Yeah. Good boy. Good Zook. Very good. Good Zook. I made so many corners, I don't remember where they are. <laughs> Good zoop. Okay, looks like we're coming up from the corner. Good zoop. I'm letting him get lost. Good Zook. Very good. He found it. Very good. Very good. What? Very good. Very good. Very good. What? Very good. Very good. Good Zook. Good Zook. Good Zook. So he likes finding toys, but he knows not to play with him, with them. Doesn't really play with them on the track, which is nice. Good boy. Good so good. No, flats, flats, flats. Zook, zook. Good boy. And I have another corner. I have a marker for that. It's right after this corner. Good, he found it. Good boy. Now I don't know if he's lost or not. Boy. Another corner. Good boy. I bait all my corners. Flats. Flats. Very good. It's gonna go on the other side because he now flips over. Good boy. That was good. That was good. That was good. You like the treasure hunt. You do. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Flats. Flats. Good zook. Zook. Good boy. We need to clean this up. And he gets up without the command. Good boy. He's lost. And I'm letting him to find the track on his own. Good boy. So at this point in tracking, I try not to help him. And not to correct much. Unless he's totally lost. He... He missed the corner, I think. He's lost. He's lost. Zook. Atos, Zook, good.
Good zook. Good zook. Good zook. That's not my object. Very good. You're done. You're not done. Keep looking. His way off track. Good boy, Platz. Platz. Good boy, Platz. 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 Good boy. I like it. He found the finish. It was not perfect. And he was off track a lot at the end. But it was a challenging track. Um, so next time I'll have to make give him a break with um, slightly better truck, easier truck. Good boy, you did well. Finish, yeah, finish, finish. What we got here? What we got here? Yay, good boy.